Finals SAQ49, Anemia. A patient scheduled for primary elective total knee replacement is found to be anemic with a hemoglobin level of 90 grams per liter. A. What are the perioperative consequences that may be associated with pre-op anemia? This includes cancellation of surgery and delayed treatment, increased length of hospital or ICU stay, increased all-cause morbidity and mortality, increased risk of cardiac events such as myocardial infarction, increased risk of respiratory, urinary and wound infections, thromboembolic events, delayed wound healing, and increased need for autologous blood transfusion and its risks. B. What physiological adaptations occur to offset the effects of anemia? This includes increased oxygen extraction by tissues. This leads to reduced SVO2. Brain and heart already have high extraction ratios, so are unable to compensate further. The next compensation is increased cardiac output as a response to reduced SVR due to reduced blood viscosity and sympathetic response to hypoxia. Redistribution of cardiac output occurs to areas of high demand such as the brain and the heart. There is rightward shift of oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve due to increased 2,3 dpg. This reduces affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen, favoring oxygen offloading at tissues. C. Describe perioperative events that may worsen the effects of anemia. This includes conditions that increase oxygen requirement such as shivering, pain, stress, and fever. Conditions that reduce oxygen delivery, including hypoxemia, for example due to inadequate oxygen therapy, failure to adequately manage the airway, vasoatelectasis, thromboembolism, and hypoventilation, reduced cardiac output, for example due to anesthetic drugs, blood loss, for example due to surgery, reduced erythropoiesis due to inflammatory response, and hypothermia, causing leftward shift of OHDC. D. What further blood tests may help in the classification of anemia? This includes mean corpuscular volume, which differentiates micro and macrocytic anemia, serum iron levels, iron deficiency causes microcytic anemia, folate and B12 levels, deficiency of these causes macrocytic anemia, reticulocyte count, low count may indicate marrow failure, increased retic count may indicate premature hemolysis of red blood cells. Red cell distribution represents a variety in red blood cell sizes due to a range of different causes of anemia. Total iron binding capacity. This is an indirect measure of the amount of transferrin present in the blood, which is increased in iron deficiency anemia and reduced in anemia of chronic disease. Transferrin saturation. This is reduced in IDA and increased in anemia of chronic disease. Serum ferritin, which is deficient in iron deficiency. Urea and electrolytes as renal dysfunction is a cause of anemia. Liver function test, inflammatory markers which may support a diagnosis of anemia of chronic disease. Heptoglobin levels which is reduced in intravascular hemolysis. Lactate dehydrogenase which is released with cell breakdown and therefore an indicator of hemolysis. Free plasma hemoglobin which is indicative of intravascular hemolysis. Test for hemoglobinopathies bone marrow cytology, which may detect marrow failure, and thyroid function tests, hypothyroidism is associated with anemia. Additional information. Examiner's report. 29.5% pass rate. Detailed knowledge of the consequences of anemia and physiological adaptations were lacking. Candidates score poorly in Part D, which asks about blood tests used to help classify anemia. Pre-op anemia. Definition. The WHO definition is Hb of less than 13 grams per dl in an adult male and less than 12 grams per dl in an adult female. However, newer recommendations, such as in the International Consensus Statement on the Perioperative Management of Anemia and Iron Deficiency in 2017, quantifies anemia as Hb of less than 13 grams per dl in adult surgical patients irrespective of gender. Unlike the WHO definition, this is not gender-specific because women have smaller circulating volumes and during surgery are just as likely to bleed as men, and women are therefore at higher risk of requiring blood transfusion. 
prevalence of anemia was found to be 36% in a large multi-center cohort of patients undergoing major surgery, Munoz M. et al. in 2017. Common causes of anemia in surgical patients includes blood loss, which may be acute or chronic, bone marrow failure, such as due to malignancy or drugs, megaloblastic anemia, such as due to folate or B12 deficiency, complex anemias, due to effects on production and breakdown, such as in renal failure, rheumatoid arthritis and hypothyroidism, hemolytic anemias, which may be inherited, such as thalassemia, sickle cell disease and spherocytosis, acquired, such as autoimmune, drugs and infection, physical, such as due to mechanical heart valves, DIC and prolonged marching, chronic disease or inflammation. This leads to increased hepcidin release from the liver, which inhibits iron absorption from the gut despite normal to high ferritin. Anemia of chronic disease is unlikely to respond to oral iron therapy. Iron deficiency affects more than 2 billion people worldwide and remains the leading cause of anemia. Absolute iron deficiency may be due to increased iron requirements, limited supply such as reduced intake or absorption, and chronic blood loss. Functional iron deficiency may be due to increased hepcidin concentrations such as due to genetic cause or chronic inflammation. Assessment of pre-op anemia. Anemia is associated with fatigue, dyspnea, palpitations, headache, and angina. Severity often reflects the speed of onset more than degree of anemia as there is less time for adaptation. Common causes listed above should be elicited, including relevant family history. Enquire about NSAIDs and alcohol intake. Respiratory and cardiovascular pathology may be worsened by anemia. Assess cardiovascular and respiratory functional status. The presence of anemia should be investigated in all surgical procedures with expected moderate to high blood loss, such as more than 500 ml. Measure hemoglobin prior to surgery in appropriate patients, including all those at risk of anemia undergoing major surgery, and in patients with significant comorbidities, especially heart or lung disease. This is an algorithm for classification of perioperative anemia. If Hb is less than 13 grams per dl, perform iron tests. Ferritin of less than 30 mcg per liter indicates iron deficiency anemia. Ferritin of 30 to 100 mcg per liter with transferrin saturation of less than 20% or CRP of more than 5 mg per liter indicates anemia of chronic inflammation with iron deficiency. Ferritin of more than 100 mcg per liter plus transferrin saturation of less than 20% or CRP of more than 5 mg per liter indicates anemia of chronic inflammation. If iron tests are normal, investigate serum vitamin B12 and folate levels. If they are low, this is megaloblastic anemia due to vitamin B12 or folate deficiency. If these are normal, investigate for other anemia such as due to malignancy, drugs, endocrine or renal cause. Treatment Patients scheduled for elective surgery should have FBC checked in the weeks approaching the operation so that abnormalities can be investigated and corrected in time. GPs should be informed of any new diagnosis of IDA made by pre-op assessment so that the cause can be fully investigated. Major non-urgent surgery should be postponed to allow the treatment of anemia and iron deficiency. Where surgery can be safely postponed, it is more appropriate and safer to treat the underlying cause and raise the hemoglobin slowly with simple effective measures such as iron supplementation and B12 injections. Transfusing a patient with pernicious anemia may precipitate heart failure. Pre-op iron treatment for iron deficiency anemia. Aim of pre-op iron treatment is to replenish iron stores aiming for serum ferritin of more than 100 mcg per liter and to achieve Hb of more than 13 grams per deciliter irrespective of gender. If more than 6 weeks until surgery, consider trial of oral iron, 40 to 60 mg daily or 80 to 100 mg alternate days and check Hb 4 weeks before surgery. If inadequate response or intolerant, switch to IV iron treatment strategy. IV iron If less than 4 to 6 weeks to surgery, give IV iron supplementation. This can be given over a few minutes and will render a patient immediately iron replete. Typical Hb rise is 1 to 2 grams per dl after 10 days. It is highly efficacious with symptom relief achieved at day 3 and Hb response at day 5. 
even giving one day pre-op has shown to aid post-op recovery. Expert hematology and pharmacist advice should be sought when developing local policies and considering which preparation to use. Many IV preparations exist, such as monofer and venofer. Check local protocol or discuss with hematologists. Side effects include irreversible skin discoloration with extravasation, fish pain reaction, which is a self-limiting reaction, with flushing, chest tightness, myalgia, without hypotension, wheezing, stridor or edema, pause infusion for 15 minutes. Hypersensitivity is rare, 1 in 25,000. It is less frequent with newer preparations. Contraindications for IV iron includes hypersensitivity, anemia not caused by iron deficiency, iron overload, and infection. Avoid co-administration with dimercaprol, as iron dimercaprol chelates are toxic to renal tissue. Caution is necessary when administering IV iron to patients with any disease states that mimic known major adverse effects, such as atopy, asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, and cardiovascular disease. Patients taking ACE inhibitors may be at elevated risk of developing adverse reactions. A recently published trial, the PREVENT trial, which is a UK-based RCT of 487 patients, concluded that pre-op IV iron was no better than placebo in reducing the need for blood transfusion or improving 30-day mortality in anemic patients undergoing major abdominal surgery. Regarding perioperative blood transfusion, kindly refer to Finals SAQ45 blood transfusion for further information. Post-op IDA, all patients who had major surgery with pre-op anemia or moderate to severe blood loss should be screened for IDA post-op for a minimum of 3 days. Early high-dose IV iron is recommended as first-line therapy. High blood loss requiring blood transfusion may also require post-op supplementary IV iron. Thank you.